Hello, I am Anya Fwampofo, and this is the home of His Excellency Kwesi Ahoy. Of course, you've known him within the political uh, terrain for a while with his brothers. Uh, we call them the three Ahoy brothers. But there's more to this family than just the Ahoys. There is the Edu Jemfi side that you, do, you, you don't know. There is the family background side that you may not know. And we've come here to find out more about this family through a book they have written and it's titled The Children of the House, number D13 South Suntresso Kumase. It's about a 500 page book. Very interesting to peruse or to read, but we're here to find out more in addition to what we have read about this book. Join me as we join the family who had seated waiting for us. I am now sitting with a family that I can actually describe as a very close-knitted family that uh, they have quite a strong bond and uh, you know the political side a lot but like I said there is maybe some side that you do not know and we're going to delve into uh, that part of the family so good morning to you the hoist and the do fees okay let me start with Ankara I mean we all know him as Ankara so I'll start with you Ankara my name yes, is, your name. My name is Atu Kwamina Ahoy. Mm -hmm. I'm the eldest of all the siblings. Great. The next one is... I'm number two, and my name is Kwesi Ahoy. Kwesi Ahoy. I'm number Tell three. Me. My maiden name was Ama Ahoy. I'm now Mrs. Amachum. Mrs. Amachum. Okay, that's four, Kwamina Ahoy. The professor of the family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Number five. The Queen Mother. Maybe <coughs> Agnes APJ Danka. Um, I was Agnes Edugency, aka Sistagi. AKA Sistagi. <laughs> Sistagi. I think it came from your mom, no so? No, okay, definitely. actually, my auntie was Auntie Agi, uh -huh. and I believe my father named me after her, the Christian name after her. Uh, so that's why everybody called me Sistagi back then, yes. Uh, anyway, interesting. All right, so. There is something about the family that, um, at least reading the book that they, uh, the family has written, like I said, about almost a 500-page book, I realized that the first father died at a very early age, at age 39. And then the mother continued with the family and got married to another man, uh, happened to be the indigency. They say Dujenfi. So if you we are calling the Ahoy and the siblings of Ahoy and the Dujenfi, that is where it, it, it started from. So they will uh, explain. But I can, you know, maybe challenge myself and say the mother was the superstar of this family. Very, very influential and done amazing with what God gave her as a gift. So um, she is actually... Um, May Charlotte, originally May Charlotte Booth, she had other names or named after other people. So you can say May Charlotte Booth, AC, in Kwaji, Tutua, Hudson, of course, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Ahoy, mm -hmm. uh, of course, the late. Yeah. So let me, I, I will let all of you have a round of your particular experience with May or Mummy. And I'll start with the elders. <coughs> um, <coughs> Mama me, as the younger children we call her, I call her mommy because me I belong to the old school. Mm -hmm. So we we are, we are used to mommy and mommy, not mommy and all those things. She was a good mother. Very strict, a good disciplinarian, 
who was very, very, very decisive and who wanted <coughs> all of us to come to our upbringing, to be Christian upbringing. We try, some of us tried to rebel, but she always brought us in line. And her teaching was that you must be disciplined. You must be honest. And you must also be truthful. So those are the pr basic principles that she imbibed in us. And we carry that on throughout our lives, both as private citizens and as public servants. We all have our mistakes. We made our mistakes, but Mami May was there to make sure that we all fell in line. She was a good mother, one of the best mothers. I wouldn't like any other person to be a, for a mother than her. And I'm grateful for what she did for me. I remember when our father died. I was then in Pembe College. We were staying in South Central. From Prembe College, from South Central to Prembe College is about five kilometers. And when I was going to school, she would give me her cover cloth to go and use as my cloth in school. And I had to carry my box from South Central to Prembe College because she could she simply could not afford to get to put me in a taxi or anything. Hold on there. I will come to that particular experience. Let's share just brief. If we had to ask you to tell us about your mother, brief sentence, what would you say about? Let me come to last one. She, she deserved accountability. She wanted good character from each one of us, and she always found a, a sense of purpose in all of us. She did not discriminate. She put us all together and made sure that we achieved what we ought to in life. She did not discriminate. That would be something I would like to, you know, understand how it works. Uh, knowing that you came to meet uh, senior siblings and you still could tell that your mother did not discriminate. Okay, let me come to uh, Auntie Anna. Let me come to you. She, was, she had a sense of integrity. She was loving to the extent that, I would say, she always told us, when you have eaten, because we eat and then she sits. Ma, won't you eat? She says, when you are full, then I'm full. So until we eat and get full, she wouldn't eat because there was not enough food for us. But she had to see to it that we ate. Just like my big brother said, Ma would take her clothes, this is for us. Ma would give her her sandals to wear while she walked barefooted. And that was the Ma that we had. Well, th <clears throat> thank you very much. Um, I think our mother was industrious. She was innovative and she had integrity. But on one situation involving me, she discriminated. <laughs> you know, I was in middle form two, and my senior sister Emma was in middle form three. Mm -hmm. And we both passed the common entrance examination to go mm -hmm. to secondary school. She decided that she couldn't sponsor both of us. So I should go, and she should finish middle school. And that's how she ended up in training college. But I will not blame her, because it was more a matter of the custom at the time. You know, us in those days was a very patriarchal society mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. therefore men were or boys were always giving priority, priority over over the woman so in that instance she discriminated but not <laughs> against me against my sister and, and and i think that's what she did he described as what the society was looking at she would go with the society mm -hmm. okay. the reason it was discrimination she was a senior so if she was not discriminating <laughs> she should have gone uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me come to Ankozi. <laughs> you will share your last tribute, but but your own. I want you to say it. I don't know uh, if you will say it in Fanti. I don't want you to say it in, in English. Uh, 
my working in a on a morning scene, on my year, so need to be any dead or do. on pay challenge. I said, More beckon on all day, yet the year, you know. It's me who the year, I'm so I know ye say or no. It's me on me challenge. I say, Oh, mammy, eh? Then challenge now. Na ye ma bibi o pe bia na na orinya. Oh me challenge na ku si de enyako pon fre no kwai. Na na nkasa so me 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 ku ni fi o do hu po se oroba. Oroba. But but the challenge was good because he made it also set up very well. And and Was it because you probably realized that daddy was not there? Somebody had to play the role or something. I mean in life you can't always have what you want. But she was like because she was in charge, she had to have what she wanted all the time, and and uh, I thought I thought differently that uh, sometimes you'll have to meet some challenges and try to overcome them. And she was very strict too. A uh, big boy like my type, myself in those days, uh, she sent me to the market to go and do the marketing for the day. So on one occasion, she sent me to uh, Asafo Market. It used to be called Kwame Nkrumah Market. To go and buy food stuff for hours i wasn't going home and i knew that when i got home i will have my a fair treatment from mom i had gone to watch asante kotoko training and uh, most of the asante kotoko players in those days were my good friends so uh, when the training was over and i knew i was late for home i i asked them to kindly drop me in their uh, kotoko bus at home so Baba Yara, Dogomoro, Salisu, uh, all of them, they put me in their car, all the way from Asafu, straight to Sasu and Treso. And all of them were there. Waiting for you. Waiting for Waiting me. for their amazing because brother. Because the food, the food. Their I was food. Carrying. Oh, so they weren't waiting for the food. They were waiting for, their they were waiting for food, food and not their amazing brother. No, no, no. Food. food. Wow. <laughs> so suddenly they, they popped the, the, the truck and out jumps Baba Yara. He, they knew all of them, Dogomoro and all. And then they called my mom. Ma, bravo here, that we see why. Mom, come and see what we see has done. It's when my mom popped out, she also knew some of the players. They, I mean, she was dumbfounded. <laughs> she couldn't believe it. So she quietly took my uh, grocery <laughs> and, and thanked the players very well. And, and that was it. They saved me for that day. <laughs> <laughs> this is the mother that we are talking about. Uh, very strict when she has to be strict. Very friendly when she has to be friendly. And very accommodating when she has to be. But otherwise, she wanted her way and wanted always to have her way. Surprisingly, <laughs> as we sit here now, of the lots, he she. is the one who has always wanting to have his way Good. and no just matter very true. just like man just what like he man. didn't want to is what he even is as now. we sat in the room oh. this morning oh, we, you know <laughs> what, when they say two white people can stay live in one room exactly place. i think they were just clashing with personality yes, exactly. yes. Personality oh, not get it. Oh. when she was leaving she decreed that she exactly <laughs> 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 where before but we still love him <laughs> to argue with you to the, the the last but the next moment is the best friend that you have yeah mm. <laughs> wow so who was um light skin mr ahoy or mrs ahoy mr ahoy mrs ahoy mrs ahoy so queen mother you took after mr ahoy mm, somehow she because was, look she, around me take me out of the picture she was quite <laughs> light skin yeah but poverty made their dark skin oh. no, the, the, the face was dark but the legs were very yeah. white mm. that tells <clears> something <throat> <laughs> when the face is dark, but the legs or the rest of the body had the maybe true complexion yeah. in me, it, what, does it, what does that mean? You know, at that time, they were always putting on cloth, and so the sun maybe was not directing. Directed, yeah. uh, directed to the skin. To the skin yeah. yeah, but she was always out trying to do something. Yeah, she was always by the fire, <clears throat> doing you the know, food and things. Right. So I, I, I just allowed for them to give bits and pieces of tributes to the woman we're talking about, Auntie May, if you may. And um, 
it started somewhere. I'm also seated. It's not just Thank the hoist and the DJ fees, but I'm also seated with um, the grandchildren of the founder of the Salvation Army. Grandchildren, right? Yes. Yeah, grandchildren <laughs> of the founder of the... And you can find all that in this book. I'll start with Prof. Well, why don't you let the elder ones yeah, okay. tell that story? Yes, because, because they know it better. They know it better. There are two of them. I know it through <laughs> them. In the later part uh, of uh, the family, okay, right. Uncle, so yeah. let me start it. Our grandfather, who was known as Amakwata Hudson, H U D S O Hudson, right. was, according to mythology, a very rich man mm -hmm. in those days. He had a story building and everything. And sure. come festivities, you go and stand on on top of a, on, on the top floor of a, of his uh, story building and start dis distributing money. Wow. Yeah. Then one day something happened and fire gutted everything in the house. He. He couldn't face the disgrace of being a poor man. So he stole away to Britain. When he got to Britain, he was penniless. So the only place he could go to was to go to the Salvation Army and stay there for shelter. So he was in Salvation Army place for two years. And then when he was coming back, the founder of Salvation Army worldwide William Booth decided that his protest should come and set up the church also in Ghana. So he was given some equipment. You know, Salvation Army was one of the first bands, if not the first in Ghana, to have a band playing alongside. And he came, he came and set the church up in Aguna Diakwa, his hometown. And then he started administration and he said he almost settled in uh, Achim area so Salvation Army is very prominent mm. in the Achim area mm, 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 mm. you being an Achim you should know mm. so <laughs> that's how that's how come that uh, the Salvation Army gained good unfortunately none of his children or grandchildren attended the Salvation Army. You, the, the roots began with you. We are, we, we, are, we are quite spiritual, but up till now, our mother never told us, nor did our uncles, why none of them enrolled in, in the Salvation Army. He himself also told me. Oh, okay. He himself told yeah. you mm. as well, and then your mother did. Yeah. But she didn't explain how. I, I don't know if you can ask Okay, I'm a two, one, two. Yeah. I think our mother married at a very early age and our father was an Anglican. Yeah. So he took her to the Anglican church. You know, when you marry, you go to your husband's church. Yes. So our mother went to the Anglican church. It was after the death of our father that she, went, she became a Methodist. Yeah. So I think that is the reason why she didn't join the Salvation Army. She moved with the husband around Ghana and the husband was an Anglican, mm. so she was following her, him to the Anglican church. And it's not our mother alone. She and her siblings, none of them was a Salvation, Salvation Army. Army. But they enjoyed the music of Salvation Army, like we did when we were kids. We used to go in there and uh, the horns and the band and everything. The music was good. Uh, it, it attracted us there, but it didn't catch us. And it didn't catch my mother and the siblings too. So none of them were Salvation Army. But some cousins. Yeah, some cousins entered the Inter church and uh, they've grown to the very high level. Oh, yes. they have? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. What was the name of that one? Mm -hmm. Family Mafu. Yeah. Family Mafu. Yeah. Dr. Addison. Yeah, Mafu. Dr. Dr. Professor Dr. Addison. Professor Addison. Professor Addison. Yeah. Yeah. They are all strong, uh, savage okay. and people. So you saw Anglican? I am Anglican. He was Anglican. baptized Methodist. in the Anglican. Methodist. Okay, he was baptized in the The rest of us were dragged to the Methodist chair, were baptized and confirmed in the Methodist church. With a, a, a sister, a sister, my father mm -hmm. was a Catholic. 
So my sister and I went to the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And I must add that Salvation Army is a given organization. And even though Mad was poor and had nothing, she was a giver. She gave to everybody who came along her way. And if there's food in her mouth, she'll take it out and give it to you. She was always prepared to share. If she had, she had one sheet, she would give half to somebody who needed it. So I thought that that was a meaningful purpose of what Salvation Army was all about. So she didn't go to the church, but she practiced. Um, we are told that the very year that the old man landed in Ghana from Britain, she gave birth to her mother. And so he was named after the church. But I think um, none of the children, maybe except the firstborn, could decide to go to the Salvation Army because of maybe the inheritance system that we have in our country. You know, as um, Akans, we are matrilineal uh, inheritance, and you will most of the time told the line of your mother. So when our grandmother uh, had to uh, divorce or had to leave the marriage and went with the children, she was a Methodist. The grandmother was a Methodist, and so he ended up enrolling the children into that denomination. Mm -hmm. Celebrating their hundredth birthday yeah, sometime this year. September. This year. September. In Ghana. The hundredth birthday in Ghana. And we've all been invited. They invite us every year. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We go. Anytime they are having an anniversary, they invite us and they, we buy their cloth, we wear them, and we go. For your information too, the grandfather that we are talking about, the last of his wives was from Achima Uyaba. Mina Jane. Mm. Yeah. I, I hope I know that <laughs> <laughs> She was from Esiapa. His name is Amwako Aka, which is an Achimde. Yes. Because his father was the clerk. clerk. To the den or chimney. So even though we are we do we don't have blood atim blood enough. Our grandfather we have a linkage to the and you, and you, Just you or others just were me. just yes. you. And then Uncle Z you were born. Abu Ram Mankong. That's where I was born. And uh, when they cut my oh. is navel, <laughs> yeah. they put it in the river Ayunsu which is there. And the belief is that Ayunsu will never take me away. I can't get drowned in, Down in Ayunsu. I am with the river gods. I, I will <laughs> add something to it. I went to Mankro way back then when I was little. And I went to the riverside with my cousin. Her name is Adoma. And then she pushed me into the river. <laughs> I don't swim. So I was like flaying in the water and then she pulled me out and I we came home and Ma said, your navel is in that river. You would have really yeah. gone today. <laughs> she, it was just yeah. like a belief yeah. that yeah. yes, if your navel, my navel wasn't in that river either. <laughs> but she thought, no, she said yeah. her navel yeah. is in that river. I That's love. why I did not drown. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. so, so... And this is Winneba. No, Zwarungu. No. Zwarungu. I was born in Zwarungu. Zwarungu? Yes. Zwarungu? Yes. Of all the places in Ghana. Why? My dad was teaching there. I was with the two boys. The two boys were there and I, I was... And you were born there? I was born there. Okay, okay, okay. Paul? Winneba. Winneba. <laughs> yeah. Kumasi. Kumasi. So, South Central today. <laughs> okay. 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 Oh, wow. So you have been all over the place. You, you, you have a linkage mm -hmm. across the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole family has a linkage across. But tell me about the Ghan lineage. Right. I think it's one grandparents. Mm -hmm. our, our maternal grandmother, 
uh, is a gun okay. from the basic area. Yeah. And then she, La yeah, La La and she gave birth to, according to the history, gave birth to two daughters, uh, Aborba and the uh, no, Lali didn't give birth to Aborba and Bintuma. Bintuma, Aborba got married to a gamma, typical gamma. And they set up their family here in Accra. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we have a house, we have a room in the family house <laughs> at the base. Well, any uh, activity that they perform, homo war, et cetera, we used to go there when we were kids and uh, enjoy the people very much. When we were installing chiefs and all, we were part of it. Then the other daughter, Bintuma, mm -hmm. got married to a Ko Amokwano. Mm -hmm who is from uh, Fete and, and, and Gumu. part from Gumwa Fete and part also from Gans. And they settled at the fancy Bojuasi, now Agun, uh, Aguna Bojuasi, and later moved to Aguna Mankong, where they built the family house, which is called Amukwa Lufie. Let's come to South Interesso, which is the, in the whole title of this book. Uh, house number D13. So, I f again, let me come to Ankara. So, tell us about the house, the number uh, D13 of South Interesting. House number D13 mm -hmm. has a special place in our hearts because that's where we all grew up. You know, because we were born at different times in different, in places, different places, it was only in house number D13 South Interesting that we all congregated mm -hmm. and grew up. I was born in Akroso, traveled with my father and mother to Enche, Enche in the western, in the western the, 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 then western region, now western north. north. Then moved to Zuarungu, where my father was a teacher. And he talked with Ella Rababana and all those people. Then he moved to Sefiwioso, where he went and taught at the government school in Sehuyoso. At Sehuyoso, I think he then changed occupation, moved to social welfare. Mm -hmm. you went to school at Sehuyoso. Yeah, I went to school mm -hmm. at Sehuyoso. Mm -hmm. So you can tell he's very connected to Sehuyoso. <laughs> very much so. The two of them. Yeah, the because they them. don't speak and you, you, without mentioning Sehuyoso. <laughs> they speak the language. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They do. I was, I started my schooling, not proper schooling, but then because my father was a teacher, teacher. when he was going, he, I followed him at Zwarungu. Mm -hmm. Then when we came to the also, I was properly enrolled as a pupil. <laughs> so I was at the also government school. Mm -hmm. That's where I started my education. Okay. Then my father got Either transfer or uh, sorry, not class two. When you started education, you started at what stage? Oh, class one. Class one. Teacher now. Teacher now. Mm -hmm. So you didn't do a Montessori and all that. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no there Montessori. Was no there was so nothing no. like no, Montessori. No, no preschool. Like so I, I was in class. I, I want to say you also government, and the school is still there. And whenever I go to you also, I go and visit the there. school. And then we moved to Kumase. <clears throat> it was in Kumase that my father first, he, he had then moved from teaching to social welfare. So he was assigned to, uh, I don't know what's the name of this, that is Asan, 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 Mufra, Mufra Boni Mufra, School. Mufra Boni School. Mufra Boni School. Mm. What's the name? Boys and Girls. Man mm -hmm. Man mm -hmm. Man yeah, no, it's called the Correctional Oh, it's okay. Oh, okay. So that's where he was working. So because we were in Kumase, he had to find, and then because he was at Asanwase, which is quite close to Ashanti New Town, we were staying at house number ME59, Ashanti New Town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got enrolled in Wesley College Party School, mm -hmm. which is quite close to Asantino Town. So 
I went to Wester College Practice School. Practice School was something like what today you will call Montessori medical school <laughs> because the teacher Wester College was a teacher training college, and the students who had to come for teacher training, teacher training, used <coughs> we the students at Wesley College as the guinea pigs. Mm. Mm. Because mm. They, mm. They, they came for teaching practice and everything. Uh, advisors. Mm -hmm. They came for teaching practice and everything with us. And it, it was a very good school. So once I went there, AC2 came there, to Wesley College. And then our father rented a house built by House of State House and Corporation. Yeah. And that house is D house number D13, D13. South Central. So uh, at some point, that the house became yours, I think, temporarily. Uh, it was leased. It what, was a lease. What was the arrangement like? Housing Corporation was, was building houses and leasing them out. So our father leased this one for, I think, 50, 50 years 50 or something. 50 years. 50 years. 50 years or something like that. Then, when he passed, our mother had to take it over. And this occurred with the help and instrumentality of the Department of Social Welfare. So that house, house number yeah. 13, is in the name of our mother. I don't know whether it's still in the name it's still or it's in her name. Yeah, because it was leased. So... For mm. 50 years, is that not uh, has it been elapsed? Yeah, it's, it's, been renewed. Renewed. it's been renewed. Yeah, so I mean, when I saw the, the lease, then I was thinking, oh, this state's houses issue that we're talking about today, Way back. It's, it's, it's an you know old uh, practice, but I wanted to understand how it, it was working then. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me give you uh, a little, yes. Yeah. The lease was not done in our father's time. Mm -hmm. He rented it from 1952 to 1962. Up to 1962, it was in his name. Mm -hmm. But 62, he had died. And um, our mother had struggled with his, our father's family. Social welfare had intervened and gotten it allocated to our mother. So in 1962, she entered into the lease with, with housing corporation mm -hmm. for 50 years so the lease was expired in 2012 and that is when we got she was alive that's when we got it re renewed for another 40 years in her name so right now it is in her name but because she's dead of course it has a what forces was she able to marshal because after your father died according to the book it was a struggle yes. even with your father's side family so how was she able to you know, marshal some forces to <laughs> get a lease of over 40 years. Well, you know, as I just said, then he was working in the social welfare department. And social welfare's responsibility is to look after abandoned children, who are children who have no caretaker. Right. <laughs> His family had come to struggle with our mother and taking everything mm. movable, you know, they call it chattels, taking all the movables away from the house. They wanted also to physically occupy the house. And social welfare, because he worked there, and also because of their responsibility for the upkeep of, you know, um, of, of uh, the family uh, children in need, they stepped in. Um, I think they wanted to go to court, but I think they managed to talk the family into you know, leaving the house for her mother and for uh, the children. So that's what happened. So you could one could say that maybe for benefits of a public servant uh, and dying and leaving his children, uh, government you know, considered that side and intervened on behalf of the widow. Yes, I think yeah. the government considered more the ch children because yeah. if the, we, my mother had lost the house, it would have become <laughs> street you know, children. The, the, the liabilities on the street. street children. So I think it was more the children than the fact that he was working in the public service. Because that, that stage was very uh, right. instrumental yeah. and that significant and critical. In lives. Yes. Yeah. It was, Maybe it was a make or break. them talk about that. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, the eldest. When, the, then when, the, when J.K. Ahoy died. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, J.K. Ahoy, uh, at a certain point, left the 
Department of Junior Welfare and, he, and went to the university. He was he was in Commonwealth Hall. He was? Yeah, he was in Commonwealth Hall. <laughs> University yeah. College of Gold Coast. It was then the University <laughs> College of Gold Coast. He was in Commonwealth Hall. And he completed his course in, I think, social welfare in 1958. And he was posted somewhere to Shita in the Western region. That's where he died. When he died, uh, he, uh, we the, don't know. That's the story. <laughs> Let me take it from there. <laughs> the story has it. Well, no, we're anecdotal, not yeah, we're not there. But it has that uh, he was a very good tennis player. Mm -hmm. And uh, he and his gang were playing tennis. Just before he got up one morning to go play tennis, somebody came with a gift of uh, whiskey, a bottle of whiskey, for him and his white friend. And uh, the white man said, no, he's going to play, so he wouldn't touch the bottle. And my daddy said he wanted to take a shot before he goes. So he took a shot, and they went to the tennis court. And as they were playing, his colleagues realized that Mr. Ahoy's strokes were faulty, unlike how they knew him. Uh, he was not being normal. Then he started complaining about dizziness. So they carried him and took him to his room and left him there. They went to continue playing their tennis. Then an old lady living nearby heard somebody uh, under extreme pressure. Is it called the word? Goggling. Goggling, coughing, trying as it were, trying as it were to, to throw up. So she ran, the old lady, as fast as her legs could carry her to the <laughs> Lord Tennis Court and told the friend that your brother that you brought is, is, is having problems in there. So they all rushed to the place and uh, he was virtually uh, so they carried him to the hospital and uh, he was pronounced dead on arrival, DOA. Uh, that is the anecdotal uh, bit of the how he died. Later, we didn't know, we did never heard about any autopsy uh, analysis, what? but it was strongly believed that she died out of poison, poison. from that whiskey bottle. Uh, that, that is the way the story went. So we were young, playing in South Central. So when the news was broken to our mother that uh, her well, husband... she was not with him there. No, oh. she was in South Central with all of us. And that the, her husband is seriously sick, so she should go to uh, Nsuta. So she stopped everything she was doing, jumped into the train. In those days, the train was working. Kumasi, Nsuta, oh. the train was night working. Train. Jumped into the train, the night train, and got all the way to... Uh, in Suita. The other side of the story we had was just before they got to Nsuita, mm -hmm. some two gentlemen boarded the plane, the, the, the train, and then and, and sat close to my mom. And then this one of them started chatting. Hey, have you heard the news? Mr. Ahoy, that fantastic tennis guy, he's dead. And my mom was sitting right by them. She 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 almost collapsed, she almost threw herself through the window. So when they the gentleman realized that my mom had become hysteric or hysterical. Uh, they, they grabbed hold of her and she told her the, her name and everything. So they took her to the place. And uh, that, is, that is the end of the story. So the body was prepared and sent to his hometown, uh, Amiam, Sifi Amiam, where he was buried. And my mother and her sister, Aunt Abakorwa, we call her Aunt Abakorwa, that's her elder sister, had to go to. Uh, bury the old man yeah, at, at Sifi, mm -hmm. I mean, near Sifi also. So was he that popular that, I mean, his passing uh, went viral? Absolutely. How popular? In Sifi also, tennis. he was a member of the elite at that time, oh. educated, intelligentsia. Okay. They had a long tennis court in Sifi also at that time. You talk about the 1950s. And they were all members of the long tennis court. Of course, I wasn't among the elite, but I was a ball boy for them on the tennis court. <laughs> yeah, and, it. And, and it rubbed on me because later on in life, I became a fantastic uh, lawn tennis, tennis player, player too. A Prempe College and, uh, Prempe College and uh, the no, University, but I won at the All Commerce Cup in Prempe College. Thank you, the ball boyship that I undertook with my father. Congratulations on that one. So the whole town, I mean, it's, the funeral was something, it's a spectacle. 
And Mr. Ahoy, because he was a teacher and had taught at the Sijio Osu Government Secondary School and, and had a relation with many a student. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like uh, a funeral of, 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 of a way. hero. He wasn't there. Yeah, like the funeral of a hero. No, I, I wasn't at the funeral, mm -hmm. but all this were related to us. So how come you weren't at a funeral? So so was that that too. Who were you? Young? I was twelve years old when he died. He was fifteen. 15. I was, was nine. nine. I was he was seven. <laughs> I was there, but I was just so <laughs> <laughs> and she was That's why she's been so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Taking account. So so none of you no. uh, was allowed at the funeral. It's only the dad who no, wants. That's no, uncle. No. Uncle. But you knew your father stay. was dead. Uh, yeah, yeah. They didn't allow they didn't take us. Mm -hmm. didn't take when us. you were home, knowing yeah. that the funeral was ongoing, yes. what was going on with you? We knew our we father was We didn't dead. know. But then at that time, we didn't understand we children. Death. No. We didn't understand death. But today's children at four o'clock will know if mm -hmm. someone is dead, no? Yeah. But the more important, and interesting mm -hmm. part of the story mm -hmm. is what happened after the death. Yeah. yeah. Which I think we should tell. I, I, yeah. Because you are saying that you didn't know what was happening. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's go on. Mom and her sister had gone there. So after the death, before then, my daddy, uh, the Ahoy, Mr. Ahoy, had given this young lady here <laughs> to her, her, at her sister <laughs> at two years to go and live at Sifi, at Hibenso. Okay. The sister uh, didn't have a child. Okay. So I think uh, his idea was to give uh, uh, Adoma. <laughs> donate, 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 donate. donate. <laughs> so Adoma went and stayed in Sifi, at Hibenso. And when my mom and sister went to the funeral, on their way back, they decided to bring Adoma back Six because the father away. is no longer kidnap, there. Kidnap, kidnap. But it was, uh, it was tight, taking her from the, 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 the caretaker, the auntie. The auntie. The auntie. So they had to stage a kidnapping scene and, and ended up kidnapping Adoma and hiding her somewhere in their luggage. And then, oh, oh. <laughs> well, luggage could be anywhere. No, they, they took her at 12 midnight. 12 when midnight. Everybody was asleep. That's exactly what I mean. 12 midnight. And hid her among something and ended up in uh, Kumase. When she came to Kumase, well, there, we didn't understand her. She, didn't, she couldn't speak any language apart from Sifi language. And, and we also couldn't speak. I too could speak a bit could of speak, it. Yeah. yeah. The story must continue. Mm -hmm. When it was all over, According to Sifi Castle, my mother had to marry yes. the person the who, yeah, of, yes. who inherited my father. Yes. Uh, Mr. Asante. Mm -hmm. He later became Nana Asante. Nana Asante. He later became the uh, chief, chief of Ariam and etc. And mom, mm -hmm. I think he, he, she sized things up and said no, she won't go in for that marriage. And they tried very hard to convince her she wouldn't budge. So it didn't happen. And according to the custom, if the woman, the widower doesn't marry the, the choice of the family, then the family will cut off, break ties with, break ties with, with the family. So that's exactly what happened. The J.K. Ahoy family, our father's family, broke off completely with us and didn't have anything to do with us from 1958 until 11, 12 years later. Which story will be told as we go as along? We go. Yeah. Wow. The part about cutting away the things. <laughs> yes. Because that's where the poverty came from. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Before the father died, our father died. Mm. Our mother was not poor. Mm. So yeah. what occasioned the poverty? Yeah, that's right. what I noticed. That at at the, the the moment your father was around, you were fairly fine. Yeah. Fine. You we were yes. until he and passed. We're, we're hoping to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> We until the death struck and then the family again in line with custom decided that every property of the man belonged to his maternal side so they brought a whole gang uh, led by his younger brother who was living with us in south and in secondary school yeah and he was in secondary school at that time uh, to Marseille. So they yeah. came and yeah. took away, yeah. as Pamela said, all the yeah. chattel, yeah. including yeah. the yeah. games yeah. that we used yeah. to play yeah. with our father. Yeah. Uh, when he was in a good mood, he, 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 he played games with them. Uh, Ludo, Monopoly in those days, uh, drafts, uh, just name it. 
the shoes, the children's shoes and all, where he's taking his books. their books, mm -hmm. all his books, all his clothing, all, uh, no, the children's boxes and shoes, all ended up at Ahibinsu. And the interesting thing about Ahibinsu at that time, whether you could, uh, no vehicle got to Ahibinsu, mm -hmm. the nearest they got to was Sifi Bodhi, mm -hmm. which is the capital of the Sifi district, Bodhi district of today's, you know, uh, um, Western, Western, Western North region. So they carried everything that they, 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 they hauled, including the broom and everything, to Bodhi, and then they carried head carry everything to Well, I wonder if they were carrying the items. Where were you? Were you crying around? Oh, well, we, were still uh, still there. we didn't understand what was mother, happening. Well, okay. Your mother Sorry. was not there. No, 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 ma, there. Ma, no. ma was there. Was ma was, was not there. She was in Diapa. Ma was not there. there. Or Diapa. Mm -hmm. Ma was not there. with their father. And the so father. you were left in the house alone? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why so, were you left in the house alone? They were schooling. Oh, we had, we had, she had some elder people with her. Taking care of me. Uh, Akoli, Sewa, uh, Kuyaba. Okay, so you have some caretakers. Yes. yes. Okay. And okay. some of the caretakers were my ma my father's side so they relatives. Were carried away. And they carried all of them oh, away. Oh, and so left only are... Akoli, our mother's side <coughs> caretaker, oh, wow. uh, who stayed with us. Okay. So everything ended up at uh, Ahibinso, and um, nobody was there to use the books, nothing. But Akoli was your age mate, so she wasn't yeah. a grown up. No, yeah. she wasn't a caretaker. So the, no. the children were In fact, Mr. Mr. Kuitri Mr. 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 and the wife yeah. were somewhere. taking care of us. Right. That but was, Akoli was a the caretaker then. No, he was your age mate, yeah. so he was with us. She was. Mm -hmm. Uh, the family <laughs> taking away yeah. everything, our shoes. And when I was in the university, this uh, uncle of ours, yeah, yeah, Senior, I mean, who led the, the, gang, the, the gang. gang, yes, I met him in Kwesi South. He had come there. He says, I don't know. I said, What's a Pabua? He said, No, he shall know what Pabua. I'm saying, ah, you didn't wear it. <laughs> well, he didn't, he couldn't get anybody to, to two year old my shoes, he couldn't get anybody to wear it. So I told him to go and wear the shoes. But why was he telling you that your shoes are there? Because it was there. <laughs> <laughs> they had carried it away. They didn't, they didn't have any use of it. You know, so that is, that is the way things went. That, so he that later took came. us to the poverty yes. level. Lame. Yeah. Because everything yeah. always had been taken away. Home. So we didn't have a bed to sleep on, mm -hmm. but they had carted everything away. Wow. And unfortunately, oh, moto. Yeah. Uh, they wanted to take his motorbike to away. Yes, that motorbike that you always rush to go and put <laughs> on. Uh, I mean, when I read that, uh, Kwesi would always rush to go and put something on the gutter. On the gutter. On the I was gutter. thinking it was a car. Mm. A and then I read moto. I said, ah. uh, At that time, how many people had cars? So a our father was, was well to yeah. do. Was <laughs> no, our father was well yeah. to do because but he had a moto. He had a moto. And a yes. Yeah. And a helmet. Yes. Yeah. Well, the social welfare again uh, protected the moto. So later it had to be sold and, uh, and the proceeds used for other things. Wow. But after the Moradin gang had done their bit and gone, some good neighbors, uh, Mr. Mr. Kuechu, Kuechu and the wife, Titali's father, the, the, the daughter became a nurse and we are still together like this. Took Kwame and them to the market and they bought some mats to bring us for that night. So early we could sleep on the mat, not on the on the cement floor, bare floor. Then I'll come in here. Yeah. Mrs. Kuechu was cooking for us when our mother was not there. So, you prepare our food. All of us ate fufu, apart from Dada too. He has never eaten fufu before. So they will prepare a special meal for him. So when he brought the first, for the first time, the second time, Kwesi told them, I don't also eat fufu. So from then, Kwesi stopped eating fufu because Dada too's food was special. The man was eating rice and chicken, <laughs> nice too. And, I, and we were swallowing this. No, no with you water. know, at some point, uh, when I got to know him, I was thinking, ah, this man likes Minjei, Minjei, Minjei. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, is that how he was when yes. he was a kid? Yeah, yes. He's never eaten fufu in his life. He was a fufu eater. 
But he joined him because his food was palatable. Yeah. Very fine. <laughs> Since then, I haven't eaten food. No. <laughs> but I eat like plain. Imagine. I love, I love. So it. you eat some swallows. You don't eat some swallows. Yes. yes. I see. So, so let's continue. So um, this neighbor was now <coughs> taking care of a large family. You, you yeah, may. For, for some time. Ma yes. wasn't there for long. She wasn't there for long. So they took care of us until she came back. When she got back, she was not. Don't forget that our mother was a, a non-working, typical housewife. Mm. Our daddy did not allow her to work. He insisted oh, that he should be a housewife and take care of the children and especially their education. So when pop popped off, mom was nothing and had nothing. But somehow she had to start. And that's what took her into it. everything that she could use her brain and hand to do, like frying the bull fruit, preparing the condo for it to go and sell. So everything that could break in a little bit of money, she tried her hands at it. And all of us here, maybe with the exception of Gato, the and, yeah, and really. Sister Agi, <laughs> we sold a condo, Amore, in the, in the, in the South Central environment. Mm -hmm. So everybody from South Central, so in those days, refers to it as the Mori, Mori phone. You know? And uh, <laughs> every morning, we had to sell before we, we came and dressed up and went to school. And um, it was beautiful hearing us sing out our... our, our uh, Advertisement. Uh, sale. <laughs> your sale. Yeah, yeah your sale. So what were you doing? How were you? Mori <laughs> You are carrying it on your head. Waking people from the That's how we were doing it. That's yeah. how we were doing it. We carry so the, the kerosene no, in you... buckets. <laughs> in a beer bottle in buckets. And you'll be carrying it on your, on your head. And uh, shouting. That's the price. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's the price. <laughs> it's crazy here. Yeah. A bottle is kotwa is a bottle. Tekuni dama is eight pence. Teku is six pence. Mm -hmm. Dama is ten pence. So they put you together, you get eight pence. There's some interesting that part in the book that readers will be excited about. Kwame and I was carrying their mori mm -hmm. uh, somewhere, and there were yeah, some yeah. trees there. There were some monkeys up the tree. <laughs> and apparently, they had seen Kwame every morning at a particular time pass Passing. under the tree. So they decided one day to pounce on Kwame and his mori. Mm -hmm. And they did that and scattered everything and, and ate the raw mori and chased this poor guy away. He came home crying. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they continued for about two weeks. He was disturbing their sleep because their mori was so With the noise. The Monkeys can actually be very, mm -hmm. you know, violent and, mm -hmm. in a way. Anyway, so, so we will go into the area of where, when this challenge, you know, the family, the family's financial situation dipped and, uh, maybe it, it got uh, on a plane stage and then they began to rise again but we'll get that uh, we'll get into that area let's take a quick breather before we get there don't forget to ask about our other father yeah yes of course we haven't got and because we haven't even gotten there mm. where the second father comes in that, that will be an interesting um you know uh, you know part to know when mrs ahoy fell in love again you know how she now changed her name from Mrs. Ahoy to Mrs. Edigenti. We'll get there pretty shortly.